welcome to my channel. If you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Gmail.com. Anyway, I was reading through my emails today and somebody said, Hey, JD, can you give me a little uh, advice on how to tighten a cannon pinion with a staking set? So I thought, man, am I retired? I cleaned two cars today and I'm beat. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do this really quickly. Might not be the best uh, video in the world, but it's, it's, you know, at least it's fast. At least it's here and it's fast. So what I've got here, and you can see this, this movement ticking away. That's the one that's got the, um, the shim in it. And I think when I turn this thing around, I think that jewel is a little tight on the top pivot on this one. So I may have to do some more work on this. So, but that's an aside. Let me just move this out of the way so it's not such a distraction. Man, what a distraction. Let me just put that out of the way and then grab these hands. Hands. Because I don't want to destroy them. Just put them right there. They're good like that. And move this camera around. There you go. There is the staking set. So, I'm going to just flip over to the other view really quickly here. All right, there's my staking set, and guess what, folks? Um, I actually bought, uh, I don't know where or when I got this, but it's a Bergeron tool for lanterning, lanterning, Canon Pignons. <laughs> Canon Pinions, Pignon. So, tool for lanterning Canon Pignon seats. So, and as you can see in this tool, just before I get into the details here, what you're going to do here, let me get my tweezers here, is you're going to put the cannon pinion um, kind of centered between the jaws of this tool. And then you're going to slightly tap down on that cannon pinion to, to make sure it's tightened. So I think I may want to get my famous drawings out and do a picture. All right, it's Mr. Dress-Up time. Time to do a picture. Try to do a picture of a cannon pinion. So, so you would normally, you would have the center wheel coming up like this, all right? I'm going to bring the center wheel right through here, and it would poke up like that, right? And then the plate for the watch would be right here, like that. It would go off uh, into the distance, and that's the plate. That's the top of the plate of a watch. Um, and then the cannon pinion would fit over the top of this. I'm going to just exaggerate this again. But the cannon pinion would fit over like this and like that. I'm totally exaggerating this, okay? And like that. Now the trick here and then the and then on top of this would be the hour wheel. So the hour wheel would go off to the side like that and it typically goes up and over and again I'm exaggerating this over like this and then this way this way down again and off to the side that's the hour wheel and then that's driven by the minute wheel that's here on the side and these are teeth right there so so that's pretty much how this thing works so, that, that, so the cannon pinion has to be tight enough so that the center wheel turns and the center wheel is actually driving um, the minutes so that's driving the minutes so the cannon pinion is actually snug enough onto this, the the arbor of the center wheel, and this is a big gear here. Down here is a big ass gear. So gear with teeth, 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 and then the other side of the gear like that, and that goes the, through the other plate with a jewel in there somewhere, and then another plate there, and like that. So pretty crappy drawing, but anyway. So that's that's the gear. And it would be, of course, much closer than this, but I'm exaggerating today. And that's the cannon pinion. So the cannon pinion, when you wind, or when you, not when you wind the watch, when you change time on the watch, right, then the, the, uh, the motion works, the setting mechanisms, I'll say, turn that minute wheel, which, which the cannon pinion actually turns, um, uh, let me see if I get this one right. That's not right. That's not right. So when you're setting the watch, the cannon pinion that's on the watch has a little tiny 
gears on it, right? Like that. And then those gears, is that right? Yeah, that's right. And the gears are moved, they're turning the time, the minute hand, there's the minute hand on the watch, right? And it's actually slipping. So the cannon pinion is in the middle. There's the, uh, I think I'm gonna fail my test here. There we go. So that's that's the uh, center wheel, right? And that's the pivot coming up here in the center wheel. And you stake that cannon pinion on. And so the cannon pinion from the top, it would look like this. It would have its teeth like that. And then there would be a center like this. And you'd be punching that on, right? Like this. And so a cannon pinion, I've got a really small one here, looks like this. There's a cannon pinion. See that? Like that. And that would go, that would be punched on to the center wheel, right? Bam! Right on the center wheel. And then, and so it has to slip for setting the time, right? But it has to be snug enough so in that, when the wheel moves here, the center wheel moves here, it actually moves the minute hand, right? And then when it moves the minute hand, it's moving another gear beside it, which is moving another gear, which moves the hour hand on the watch. So sometimes a cannon pinion will get loose. And if the cannon pinion gets loose, you can, you can set the time, but when this center wheel turns, the cannon pinion won't turn because it's just too loose. So you have to tighten the cannon pinion up. So that's, that's, that's the job. I've done this, uh, not a lot, but quite a few times, I guess. So it doesn't happen a lot. So you want it snug enough, but not so snug that it, that when you're setting the time that this thing doesn't rotate, because it needs to rotate and there has to be enough friction on here so that when the center wheel turns, the cannon pinion turns, and, and, and enough non-friction, I guess, that when you're setting the time that the cannon pinion will turn without the wheel turning, right? So it's got to be like that. Uh, years ago, I put a hair in there to tighten up a cannon pinion. Someone told me, you should put a hair in there, and that'll tighten the cannon pinion up. That's not the right way to do it. you got to tighten the cannon pinion. So the challenge in tightening the cannon pinion is, let me just, more drill rings. More drill rings. So here's a big, here's, I'm going to draw a big picture of the cannon pinion. There it is there. That's a huge cannon pinion picture. And it's got a wall on it like that. And some cannon pinions have an empty area on them. They're, they're sort of like sideways like that. You see some of them that have an empty area like that, which make it a little bit easier to close the cannon pinion with those ones. Um, and they go down like, the cannon pinion goes down like that, and then there's the gear that I just showed you and the little cannon pinion I had. And then there's the, in here, inside the cannon pinion, there's this, the center wheel, um, and that's the shaft for the center wheel. You could call it the pivot because it's on the end, right? So that's the shaft for the center wheel. And it ends like that. And so the minute wheel attaches to the outside of this. And the hour wheel attaches to the, the hour wheel goes over like that. But I won't draw that, okay? So, so that's the shaft there. So you have to, and I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw, I'm going to color this in a bit, right? So. So the challenge in, in actually closing the cannon pinion is that you actually have to remove the cannon pinion first. And I've made videos on how to remove a cannon pinion, I think. I've done it in a lot of videos that you've seen. So I'm going to draw the cannon pinion in blue here. Big blue cannon pinion. And there's, these are the, this is the, the, the teeth part, the gear part that I showed you earlier. So there's the big blue cannon pinion. So what you want to do is put that in the staking set so that you're applying pressure on this side and on this side. Now the cannon pinion is is off the watch. It's like in this in this situation here, right? So so you're applying pressure on both sides of that cannon pinion with your staking set, and that actually closes the cannon pinion ever so slightly. So the cannon pinion, if you did a close-up of this here, this would be bent a bit, right? But that's an exaggeration, just ever so slightly. So the tricky part in actually closing the cannon pinion is not to 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 bang this too hard. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can do it free form, 
um, where you're just putting the cannon pinion into the staking set and I'll show you how to do that or you can put a wire in the cannon pinion right of the right size so a wire that's just slightly uh, smaller than the hole that's in there and then that when you tap the on your staking set to close this it, it will close to the wire it won't go any further than the wire so it won't collapse your cannon pinion so you can do that or you can just very carefully tap it um, if you're new to doing this I recommend finding a wire uh, some sort of a gauged wire uh, this here is very small gauged wire here so this cannon pinion would fit in here right but but these wires are way too small for this I believe I believe I want to be true so these are too small so I can't I gotta put my glasses on here because all I'm doing is, is playing guitar with my wire so anyway you'd put a thicker wire in there and then that thicker wire would be would be filling the space while you tap it so that wire wouldn't be good enough um, and you would have to use a steel wire because if you use brass wire if you take a wire that's I'll just grab some brass wire if you take some some uh, this is I believe uh, brass copper maybe this is copper wire actually so if you take some wire that's soft like copper wire like that and these are used for dial feet um, then when you tap the cannon pinion um, it's gonna this wire is really soft so it's not going to prevent the cannon pinion from collapsing so the best thing to use is is a is steel wire blued steel wire or whatever and put the wire in and make sure it's fit properly now I've done cannon pinions uh, before but without putting the wire in just by winging it right so now the cannon pin the Bergeron cannon pinion tools I got look like this so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this pad because it's just getting in the way now so and I need to change my mat it's getting dirty so so there it is there so you would put this in the staking set right and then you and then you would use this to pound down on this and you see the double jaws there uh, they're pretty so you put the cannon pin in the middle there and then you go tap 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 and that would in effect close the cannon pinion so so that's one way of doing it but the staking sets all have stumps and stakes for closing cannon pinions so let me let me go get my stump and stake all right there's my stump and stake so your 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 uh, staking set should have a stump that looks like this it should have a stump that looks like this if it doesn't you may have to buy a stump that looks like this but it should have a stump and I'm gonna say it again that looks like this so what you do is you put that in your staking set now being a expert staker <laughs> not you fi first find out what hole that the stump fits in right so it usually it's not the end one it's usually the second one over which is what this stump fits in it's amazing so and then you know it's this hole so you have to center it right so you get your centering stake which is this one here right and I gotta lift this out here Did I tell you I broke a fingernail today working on my car which means I can't play any classical guitar till it grows back so you just take your centering stake and then center that down like that and then tighten the staking set like that there's the broken fingernail and it right there and the fingernails are dirty because I got grease and oil and all kinds of crap on them so that's the broken fingernail anyway so pull that out like that and then put your stump back and try to line that up like this now usually I work on pocket watches and the cannon pinions are a heck of a lot bigger than the one I have in this little tiny weenie part here this is one I got from a watch but the technique is the same so again you can stuff a wire in there and the wire can be the same size as the hole because it'll, it'll squish down a bit or it can not be I've done the cannon pinions before I change glasses here so I'm gonna put these ones on so I can see what the heck I'm doing so the cannon pinions I usually use or stake are a lot bigger than this one but here's the technique so anyway you stuff it with a wire right and then you take your tool that's in your staking set and I pull that out of my Marshall staking set 
and you make sure that stake is completely aligned with the top of this of this stump here so that the two blades are aligned like that and then you put the cannon pinion in like this like that so there's the cannon pinion and you want to make sure the cannon pinion isn't this the, the two blades are not right at the at the gear where the gear is here right so I'm gonna close get a bit of a close-up here there I'm trying to do this work well I am looking at it on the camera here so so here it's a little bit too close so you want it to be over just a bit right so you can should be able to nudge that over like that now it's too far and you want to nudge it again and you want to make sure that stump and the stake are aligned perfectly because you're going to tap on that, right? So, so now you've got them aligned. And I'm just going to move this ever so slightly. There we go. So now they're nicely aligned. That should work. I'm looking down on the side. It's not centered completely, but it's not too bad. There it is there, right? And then there it is sitting there, and that's kind of to the center of the cannon pinion, which is perfect, right? And then I take this, take my hammer, my hammer, my hammer, I'm going to get my hammer. I'm talking to you well, I'm, whilst I'm getting my hammer. And I'm going to back off just a bit on the video here. Remind me to do a watch check after. It's a beautiful little watch. So I'm taking my hammer, right, and I've got the soft side here of the hammer, which is some sort of a nylon, I think. That would be a nylon tip on that. And then this hammer has a brass tip. And so I use the brass tip on that, make sure it's nice and tight. And I'm just, and you're just going to take this hammer and you're going to tap down ever so lightly on it like this. Watch this. Done. Now, if you do more than that on that, you can completely collapse that, that, uh, cannon pinion, right? So that's done. I'm going to switch glasses again because I can't see a freaking thing with my other glasses when I'm doing up close work. So put that other glasses on. So grab that cannon pinion. And again, I've done this without putting the wire in, but you just barely tap it, right? Because you, you can try it out on, your, on the watch and you'll know whether it's snug or not. And there it is. So you take that out. That's the stump there. And the two blades were perfectly aligned on this. So like that. So they're able to squash that cannon pinion in the middle so now this cannon pinion this is a cannon pinion from one of my used parts so but it still has it's still as you can see this not collapsed so i'm going to see if i can show you that can you see through that cannon pinion yeah, let me see back of the hand back of the hand there we go so you see that there's still a hole there so you can still see there that cannon pinion i did not collapse it but that little tiny bit of tapping i did on the cannon pinion god fingers look terrible up close eh? the little bit of tapping i did on that cannon pinion would have closed it closed it in on the center wheel um i'll say pivot right it's sort of the end of the shaft anyway it's not really the pivot but anyway so the uh it would have closed down on that nicely and then you just do that just so the the trick here is not to tap this thing too hard if you tap this thing and start tapping it and saying that i tap it enough you're going to screw up your cannon pinion and then good luck trying to find a new one right so so that's pretty much how you do that and now i'm going to do give you a watch check so i'm going to move this staking set aside um and my stake and this is just a used cannon pinion Put some put the other stuff away later and i'll just show you this watch so i went to strap code for this strap so i love strap code they make beautiful straps i think they focus on seiko but if you look at the strap closely right and you look at the workings on that that is like beautifully machined right it's a little bit dirty because i haven't cleaned it in a while but but that tucks down like this and there's a hole right there on this and then when you tuck that in when you push these in that goes into the hole like that and it holds the strap in place right so that's one side like that right and that's held in place and then the other side so it's like a butterfly strap like that it's a little bit scratched up but that's fine and then this is a seiko bumblebee so it's a seiko bumblebee i believe it has the uh, so there's the 
just look at the number there. Put my fingers out of the way so you can see what's going on here. The scuba diver. And it there's the number as you can see. 7S26. So it's a 7S26 movement in this watch. It's a bit of dirt in here. I should clean this up, right? But so it's a standard 7S26, so it's not hacking and it's not winding. You have to wind, it's an automatic watch, you gotta do this a whole lot. But look at the face on this thing. It's called well it just says automatic diver 200 meters, but it's called the Bumblebee. So the Seiko Bumblebee. Um, I got this probably six years ago, maybe, just because it looks so cool. I like yellow. Yellow is very sporty. So, and it's got a 120 click movement or 120 clicks on the uh, bezel here. Listen to that. That's a thing of beauty, folks. I believe it's got double double uh, ball bearings on the click because you can hear it go click 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 click. Like that so it's a double bell bearing click I think and it's a screw down crown of course and there's a bit of there's a crown guard over that so you're not going to ruin that so it's a screw down crown it's also date day date so there's it's Sunday the 17th ladies and germs so day date on that it's a nice day date as well um, and I and it's not a cheap watch I think these things were like 400 bucks for these because they're bumblebees, right? So when you put it on your wrist like this, the other way, you idiot, you idiot. <laughs> anyway, you put it on your wrist like that. And there it is. You get the hairy wrist happening here. What the hell? Anyway, so that's the Seiko Bumblebee. I've got some nice compliments on that. People go, hey, that's a really nice watch. And I go, thanks. And it has a really good loom. So this thing will loom like crazy without really shining a light on it. So you go to bed at night and the loom stays a long time on this. So that's the Seiko Bumblebee. So that's a watch check for you. So let me get back to my video. So there you go. That's how you close the Canon Pinion. Uh, this is my Airy Loop. My Airy Loop. A-E-R-Y or A-R-U-I. What is that? Airy Loop. Just so I can tell you. A-R-Y. ARY loop. I'm going to show it to you because some people have been asking about this loop. I got two. I always have a backup of some sort. So this is a, I recommend, there's the Airy loop there. And I recommend getting the Maxi. They got something called a Maxi. Mini standard and Maxi. So get the Maxi because uh, if you got decent sized glasses, the, the standard one is a bit hard to stretch. I have the standard one on here. So this is the Airy loop here. And it flips up and then it flips down and it grabs onto your glasses nicely and you can adjust these little tabs on the bottom. They're metal, but you can adjust them. They're pliable. So, and then this loop just flings down. This one's a little loose, I think. Yeah, a little bit loose. And I got, I think, a times five on here so you can get nice and close. So these glasses are actually times three. So they're not really reading glasses. They're just, they're for doing pocket watch work. And I flip that five, times five down, I can get in deep and dirty. So that's the airy loop. Um, and it does it have a product number on there? There you go. So there's There's the number Just for you folks that want to get one of these things. So they're really good. They're, they're the best loop around You don't they're about 120 bucks. So they're not cheap, but you'll never have to get another one So I was using these stupid things for the longest time, right? These little clip-on loops that you flip over What an unprofessional way of doing watch work so I decided to get myself uh, two of these because uh, I have two separate pairs of glasses. Like I told you before, I have another pair of glasses that are prescription. So they're computer on the top, they're pocket watch on the bottom, and then the airy loop is flipping down. So all paid for. I didn't have, have to even buy it. So let me just switch glasses here. Oh, the, ooh, I can see my screen now. Ooh, I can see my screen. Anyway, that's the video on uh, how to how to close your cannon pinion down how to how to how to tighten up your cannon pinion um so i promised i'd do it i'm poopy tired today so hope you enjoy this uh, video um i do take requests obviously because i spent a whole day cleaning two cars uh completely summertime cleaning 
and then I read this request and said, hey, buddy, can you make a, a video on how to close the Canon pinion? I was like, oh, my God. And I did it. There you go. And that's how you do it. So the big tip here is to just tap it like three times very lightly. Um, if you if you're able to put a wire inside the cannon pinion, a steel wire, that's the best way of doing it. That way, the cannon pinion won't collapse on you. It'll 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 tighten up to that steel wire, but uh, but it won't collapse. Don't over tighten it because it just don't, it doesn't work well with the watch. It's a it's an art. Like closing a cannon pinion is an art. I've been successful at doing it every friggin' time. So. So thanks for watching my videos, subscribe to my channel, share it with others. Um, and if you got any more questions, uh, just ask and have a good day. It's, uh, I think it's Easter today. So go find some eggs and have some fun.